Hi everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, today I wanted to correct, uh, I guess, an omission in my previous video. Um, last week I covered an email about sending emails. And one thing that I demonstrated in Outlook at least was how to include images in the body of the email, not as an attachment, but embedded in the actual body. And someone pointed out to me that I didn't do the same for Thunderbird. So if you come down to Thunderbird and you, uh, well, you look at the video, but if you also come on the Thunderbird page, uh, I have code that sends an email, but there's nothing here either about embedding images. So I wanted to correct that today and go over. Now, part of the reason to tell you the truth that I didn't include it in the original YouTube video is I had never done that type of work with uh, Thunderbird previously. So um, I spent a couple days, I did some testing, trial and error, and that's what I'm going to present to you today. So I've retaken the same database. All I've done uh, is stripped out the Outlook, the CDO mail, all that stuff. So we're really concentrating on Thunderbird here. So we'll just launch it up. And uh, I should also point out that on my desktop, I've placed a couple test images that we're going to use for this demo. So I put a GIF, a BMP, a JPEG, and a PNG, which are the common files that we see on computers nowadays. Um, and if we come here, I now have created a slightly updated uh, version of the exact same function as before. I'm going to go over the why. What happens is is Outlook through VBA, we can just pass the file and Outlook does whatever it has to do. Thunderbird, we don't have access, remember, we don't have access to this huge VBA library. What we have access to is a command line. So we don't have any functionality to convert images and things like that. So it's upon us to do that. So what does that mean? Well, we have to pass to Thunderbird properly formatted HTML. And we can't pass it an image file because that's an attachment. We want to embed it directly in the message. So we have to embed the image content in the HTML directly. To do so, we have to build a proper HTML image tag source. And for images, and I'll just give you an example here, for images, this is the type of thing you're looking at. So we have to create an image. In this case, this specific scenario here, it was a JPEG, and we have to pass it in a base 64. But we now have to do this through VBA. So we're going to take our file, convert it into base 64, and then build this HTML image tag with this massive string that looks like gibberish to us but actually represents an image properly in HTML. So how do we do that? Well, it really isn't that hard once you know how to approach it. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is, first of all, I have a module, Files and Folders, and if you scroll down, you're going to see now that I've added two new functions. Now, the first one here, read file as binary, that's exactly what it does. So we're going to use this to read image files as binaries. And then we're going to take what that has been read into a binary array, and we're going to pass it to our second function, which is encode base64. So it's going to take that binary array, and it's going to come through here, and it's going to transfer it and convert it over to a base64 format. So that's how we're going to create that, what I'm calling gibberish here, everything after that, okay? So it goes on for a mile. The binary array for images is huge, <clears throat> especially when you get into things like uh, GIFs and BMPs, it's even worse. But it changes nothing because now it's all automated. We don't even have to worry about it. The second thing I did, so we, we've looked at the first part, which is the encoding. The second part, I then had to add another function to Thunderbird that we can call, which is exactly that Thunderbird add image file. So what we're doing is we're going to pass it a file that we want to include in HTML. And what it's going to do is it's going to build up, like I said, that image tag. So it's going to create the image tag. It's going to build the source 
attribute. And as you can see here, there's a special case for BMPs where we also have to include the file name. And then it's going to add the base64. It does that in code and read file as binary that we just looked at. And then it just outputs a properly formatted image tag for us to now use. So with three functions, we now can basically embed images. Now doing this, I started off, let's go back to our testing routine. And as you can see here, I, I've put all four images, but let's start off the straightforward case where we're just adding a JPEG. So I'm going to show you here, it's the exact same example as in my previous video. So we're doing a two to two recipients separated by a, a semicolon. And then I have my subject line and then I'm passing the HTML body that I want to include, which we build here first. And if you do that, it's going to work perfectly because our functions work. And now we have an image embedded directly into our email. Beautiful. And then I went on and I tried to do the same thing with a PNG. And when I did that, that too worked and I got the result I wanted. However, the minute I went to try to attach a GIF or a BMP, the previous function would fail. And it took me a bit of testing and that's what this line up here actually is. I eventually realized that the issue had to do not with my function for converting images or anything like that. But if we look at the Thunderbird function that we're calling, at the end here, we're building a command to execute and then we're running it as part of the wscript shell run command. And what I found is that the run command has a character limit. And BMPs, um, BMPs and GIFs, the, the converted encoded images were exceeding the string length. So it became even more complex. And that's where I had to change the function slightly now, where if the string length is under the limit, then we can just use it as it always was. Easy, no, no problems there. But in the case that the content starts to exceed or get near the limit of the uh, w script shell run command, then we had to use an intermediary HTML file. So what does it do? It's quite simply, we build up this HTML and we're passing it to our function like we always did, that's fine. But I come down here now in this section here, I'll just highlight it for a second, in this section here. And I'm checking right here the length of the command. And I believe the length limiting in my testing is about 32,767 uh, characters long is the limit. I'm removing about 100. It's a bit of a leeway to do with the path with the Thunderbird executable could be located. I just threw 100 at it. In my case, it was only 31. I just made a simple number. But this should work. If not, you can always adjust that and jump it up to 200 if you really need to. But I don't think that's ever going to truly be necessary. But basically this line, I'm looking at the length of the entire command. So all the options, including the body. And if we're under the limit, then we can just use the command as we always did. So we're not changing anything here. But in the else section, start off first by creating a temporary var variable called, uh, as you can see, b use HTML file. And I set it to true. We can use that at a later point in time if we want to do cleanup. Uh, then I go and I define a string which represents the HTML file we're going to create. So it's a path and a file name. I'm using the te Windows temporary folder. You can use whatever you'd like, but this works well. And then I gave it a name. Then the third command, call overwrite text, is going to create the actual HTML file. And it's a very simple uh, function that I created years ago. It's on my website, I'll include the link below. But it just basically opens the file, adds the content that we pass to it, and closes the file. So it creates a file for us. 
In this case, it's going to be an HTML file. Then I come down and now instead of using the body option, I'm using a message option, a message argument, and I'm passing to it the file that we just created. So basically we're telling it instead of using the body HTML that we usually would pass, now you're going to use for the message this file. It's going to be a, become a template for building the new email. And then it just comes down and we execute the command as normal. So to review it very quickly, if the character limit isn't hit, we just send the HTML raw straight to the body and we can execute the command and it works. If the string for the body or the command is too long, then we have to go through the intermediary of building an actual HTML file on the hard drive and we pass that HTML file back to Thunderbird. So that being said, once that's in place, just this small little modification, now we can come and we can add as much content as we want, as many emails, as long an email as you want. There no longer is a character limit because if you exceed the character limit, you're just building an HTML file and the HTML file can go on for miles. Once you do that, now you can run it and it will work every single time, no matter what you throw at it. So as you can see, more convoluted than Outlook for sure. There's no doubt about that. But with a couple very simple functions, we were able to easily embed any content, any images directly into a Thunderbird email. The last thing I wanted to point out is that temp variable that we created. If we wanted to clean up after ourselves, then we could add a line like this. If temp var use HTML file is true, so we did have to use an HTML file, then we're going to kill, so delete the file. One thing I'm going to tell you, however, is you cannot include it, as I've done here, directly in the function that's being called to create the email, because it takes a moment for the shell command to execute and load Thunderbird and generate the email. And VBA runs faster than that process. So what's going to happen is it's going to delete the file before the process even gets to reading the file and you'll get an error. So what you have to do, and that's why I put that comment there, is you need to put this cleanup line in, let's say, the closing of your form that you're using to generate the email. Or perhaps it'll be part of a cleanup routine upon closing the entire database. But you cannot have it right after the actual TB send email command because it won't work. You will delete the file before Thunderbird gets a chance to create it. Therefore, you'll never get your embedded emails and you'll actually end up with a blank email because it will never read any file. So just know you can clean up the temp file. It's not the end of the world, but it is a good practice. Let's not kid ourselves. We should be cleaning up after ourselves. So if we're creating a file, we should be deleting it. But you have to think now as to where you place that command. So closing the form that issues the command or closing the database would be the two locations I'd be choosing. So that pretty much covers it. Uh, pretty simple once you know what to do. And as you can see, uh, two modules. I now have a file and folder module and my Thunderbird module. So two modules and we're able to embed any image we want in a Thunderbird email. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope this answers some of your questions. And um, please, if you don't mind, uh, give me a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, uh, leave me some comments, let me know what direction you'd like to see the, this channel go, uh, any ideas for future episodes, comments about this one, be greatly appreciated. And if you have the ability to spread and share these videos, with your uh, networks online, please do so. And take care, guys. We'll see you in the next video.